Yeah, I, I like Sickle Slicer better. There's a lot of good equipment floating around. Whoa! Uh, opened uh, a foil uh, armacoil. Oh, uh, what do you do? Oh, that one looks really oh nice in God. a trade binder. He looks at the back. He's got to check the He's condition out. He's checking the condition. It is stamped. <laughs> There's a lot of good equipment floating around. Oh, oh, Gotta check the He's condition out. He's checking the condition. It is stamped. <laughs> is there anything I love stamped? That in it. Foil. Target <laughs> oh, oh, Pascal, lighting. what are you made of here, buddy? Wow. Stamped what are you foil made of, Pascal, From a Grand Prix no. Top 8. You know, that could go in his collection for a very long time. That is, that is, a, yes, that is a nice souvenir from Grand Prix Las Vegas. Yeah, that is a, a the best Modern Masters souvenir <laughs> on the planet, right? <laughs> What better souvenir could you walk away from the weekend with? I mean, if you're not a batter of Grand Trophy, that is the question, Pascal Maynard. It, it that is the question. It. Foil Tarmogoyf. Pascal ends up. So, tell me a little bit about what just happened for people that don't know what happened. Okay, so essentially, uh, well, I, I explained before what was a draft, I should tell you. So, you open cards from a pack. And you make your deck with it. So that was uh, in the top eight of Grand Prix Las Vegas, which was one of the biggest Grand Prix ever. There was like four or 5,000 players in it. Um, and in the top eight, we need to draft another deck to play your three rounds of the top eight, so quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals. And um, it was not just a Grand Prix. It was a sp pretty specific Grand Prix because... I was in a race at that time uh, for the person with the most points in Grand Prix uh, in the world. So in the, the player at the end of the year who had the most points from Grand Prix uh, would get an invitation to the World Championship, a 16-player tournament. So like the points I was getting there were, were worth more than like what anyone else could get in a tournament. Uh, and I think I was like second in the race. There was an, another guy in uh, in front of me. So uh, I don't know. The, winning this would mean a lot. Obviously, there's mo like the more you win in the top eight, the more money you win in the tournament. And that card that I opened uh, was like the, the most expensive card that you could open in one of those packs. It was worth, I think at that time, around like 500 US. Um, and you keep the cards that you take, obviously. I was thinking like, okay, there's another. There was another card in the pack that I could play in my deck. That was like a really good card that could add to my deck. My deck was already pretty good uh, because this is pack. That, that was pack two out of three. So I already had um, like fifteen cards selected from my deck, and my deck was already pretty good. Uh, so I was like, <laughs> "It's good money. <laughs> it's time. There, it's timed. So you have like forty-five seconds to make your choice." <clears throat> and usually you don't have to think about those type of things. Like I, I never thought about like. In a, in a tournament that significant, like I would always take the card that's better for my deck. Yeah. But when it's like five hundred dollars, you're like, okay, maybe I should st start thinking about the EV here and like, is yeah. that money, is that guaranteed money worth more than like the one percent whatever card that's going to make my deck better? Yeah. Um, and one thing, one thing that's important too is that those cards are stamped, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, that was not accounted in that my doesn't head. Doesn't matter. Uh, no, it it does matter. Like. It's pe it certainly did matter after yeah. after the fact, but I, I didn't think about it in At forty five seconds. Yeah, got it, got it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for those who want to like start doing math and seeing like what was the most EV play, uh, spoiler: it's not close at all. <laughs> By far, the best play for EV is to take the foil card. Uh, people have done maths and like it's not close at all. If you're only there for the money, it's way better to take the card. Uh, but you know, in 45 seconds, it's still kind of hard because you don't, you don't ever get those situations. So I, I took the foil card and like what happened is three, specifically three top pros said like, and there are three friends They They said like, you know, you, we lost uh, you. Uh, I lost respect for you. You have no <laughs> respect for the game. Like 
you're only in there for the money and like and they got thrashed because people were like no man that's five hundred dollar like fuck you <laughs> and <laughs> So the, these guys got trashed. To be honest, like those are people that I'm friends with. Yeah. So they kind of like made that as a joke, but they have they they're they're people that have like more than twenty thousand followers on Twitter each. So when you put that out there to the public, not everybody not everybody knows that they're my friend and that we're friends and that it's like not literal. Mm-hmm. So they got trashed a lot, and they were like, "You guys are bully," and like. You're stupid you, you would have made the same decision in the same spot like so they got a lot of trash they actually some of them lost like their job as content creators for uh for a website for like oh, a wow. year <laughs> because they all the comments on all of their content was like trash so they got the bad end of it and i got an insane amount of exposure at that moment like to give you an example uh like i was known in magic but for my results which were not like top tier or anything that I was just like a, a known professional player, but that's it. And I was barely using Twitter at that time. I used my Twitter account to tweet, um, uh, an eBay auction of the card after the event. And I got like 4k followers almost <laughs> overnight. <for> wow. <laughs> just for that. Like now I think I have close to 10 K and four, thousand came from that like one overnight and that's like five years ago so that's crazy um so how much did uh how how did this entire sale ended up going uh it's a long story i'll make it short i put i put it on ebay it went up to twenty thousand. i discovered that there were fake bids on it ebay told me that like there's no way to remove them other than talking to the person and telling them to remove it and there were trolls so they didn't do it so I was frustrated. I took down the auction and then I made a Facebook and Twitter silent auction. So people would me- private message me their, their offer and I would just sell it to the person who offered the most after like a week. So I, I ended up selling it for 2000 US, but I gave away 75% to charity. So like, at, so when I put it on eBay, I said that I would give 50% to charity. Um, and then like it lost all traction when I removed it, obviously. So it was hard to make another auction. So that's why I did the silent Facebook. And I said, I would give 75% charity instead of, uh, 50% just spark a little bit more interest and traffic to it. Um, so yeah, in the end I got the $500 that <laughs> it was worth and I gave, you know, 1.5 K to charity. So that's a win and a lot of exposure, obviously. Yeah, it's pretty good. No, cause we still see the. We still see the the topics, I guess, on Reddit and stuff, and I, I I guess people still believe that this was sold for fifteen or sixteen k US. Yeah, because there was like a million articles saying that it sold for that amount, but it was just like for a day listed as that amount because of a fake bid. So so then this video should be called "How Much the Tarmogoyf Was Actually Sold For." <laughs> <laughs> debunking the fake news all right that's it for the let's chat segment make sure to follow pascal on twitter at pascal menar make sure to follow him on twitch the mythic society and he's got a store online where he sells a bunch of goodies themythicstore.com make sure to join us tomorrow at seven as a former magic the gathering professional player shows me how to play hearthstone P.S. Uh, I don't think he actually plays Hearthstone. We'll see how that goes.